emotionally damaged people are always sexually promiscuous. Let me say this again. Mm. If you are traumatized, if you are emotionally damaged, you are promiscuous. And do you want to know why? Dang. Why is that? Emotionally traumatized people require constant validation from others. I have dated some overly sexual women. I don't want to put myself in, I don't want to say his shoes, but I, I, I see what he's saying. Because I, I, have, I, have, I have been there like, damn, girl, you, you were just actually climbing through my window. And now you got a new man just like that. I don't know. I mean, are you stalking him? Dr. Umar, everybody's favorite doc guy. You know what I'm saying? Philly's on Dr. Umar. Emotionally damaged people are always sexually promiscuous. Uh, is that is any validity to that? Uh, I'll speak to it after. Yeah, the video. Let's see. It's this jump podcast. Oh. Let's go. Emotionally damaged people are always sexually promiscuous. Let me say this again. Mm. If you are traumatized, if you are mm. emotionally damaged, mm. you are promiscuous. And do you want to know why? Dang. Why is that? Tell us. Emotionally traumatized people require constant validation from others. Mm. You married to a woman who's been traumatized, abuse, abandonment, whatever. When you're not around her for too many days, she has to entertain another man because her trauma dictates constant validation and constant mm. validation means I must have a man in my personal space. This is, you ever date a woman who was crazy about you? Ooh, she absolutely crazy, loved yeah. you. So you thought it was really <laughs> addiction. Yes. When, when you finally let her go, when you finally got her to stop stalking you, she ended up with another man like that. Mm, and your hey, ego yes. took a hit. You said, wait a minute. I know that woman was crazy about me. Crammed in my window, came to my, you understand? She was, cr <laughs> she was crazy about your presence in her life. And the minute you distanced yourself from her life, she found a replacement without a problem. Emotionally damaged people are promiscuous because they cannot go without constant validation. They need that validation. They need it. Most of our promiscuous women are damaged women. They're not having sex because they love having sex. Mm. They're having sex because they have learned this is the only way I can get a man's attention. Mm. Oh, man. T says everyone has some sort of emotional trauma. So I guess it makes all of us. T, you don't agree, T? Hey, you know what? I, I have dated some overly sexual women. I don't want to put myself in. I don't want to say his shoes, but I, I, I see what he's saying. Because I, I have I have I have been there like, damn, girl, you you were just actually climbing through my window and now you got a new man just like that. And I don't know. I mean, are you stalking him? So, I mean, I, I agree with some parts that he said and some parts not. But um, I say for myself, a month after my 21st birthday, seeing my dad have a heart attack, drop dead in my mother's kitchen. And so, you know, dealing with that trauma, my mom coming home, you know, 30 years married and her husband is now gone and dealing with her emotions they say uh, energy is transferable so i'm trying to console my mother you know who birthed me who just lost her husband of 30 years and now once i get her together it's nobody there to console me okay. and so the, the way that i you know emotionally took care of myself is i became hypersexual so i just anytime i was emotional oh yeah I, I, look, i'm out here grabbing buns i'm out here <laughs> and it, it went even deeper because it was a thing like Anytime I was emotionally off, anything, anger, yeah. any type of emotion that I felt, all right, I, me and my girl could be arguing, you know what, I'm going to go over here with this. And tap some buns. And then my emotions, is, is that what you're saying? I'm going to reset myself. So I get what he's saying that I was emotionally, uh, again, up until like 2018, yeah, I was emotionally a mess. And that yeah. was the way I, I yeah. soothed myself. So I get that part, what he was saying. But like some women, the, the whole thing about like you leave and, and another man coming that I don't really agree with that part because she might have just been tired of you and just found somebody else that fit her in her life or whatever. But I mean, I agree with that. Just from my standpoint, I know I was like that. So I do believe that a lot of women who have emotional issues, yeah. that's, that's what they as soon as a crazy meets a new person. It's like they're falling off the radar of crazy. I mean, yeah, that's true. They, I, man, I remember, man, back in the day, man, I think I, I think I was like about my second year of college. So, you know, I, mean, I came home and my man hooked me up with this with this with this shorty. And um, I'm dating a shorty. I mean, shorty was gorgeous. She was going a lot. She was she was she was gorgeous. So, you know, what I mean, I'm I'm in her crib, man. We 
we in into it. You know what I mean? I mean, we into it. I mean, hot and heavy, bro. Hot and heavy, man. Sweating. So I got my pants. I got my pants down, like down towards my ankles and shit. Because back back then, I didn't believe in taking my pants all the way down. I never knew when you got to get a you know I mean quick getaway. So <laughs> I got my pants all the way down to my ankle, man. I'm in getting into it, and she stops me, man. Because yeah, you know we were young, so I'm like dry humping. I'm trying to get in the job. Mid hump, she like. Yeah. I gotta tell you something. I'm like, well, you know, what I mean, y'all told me now. She started telling me that a man flew up to her window. Yeah, a murder. man <laughs> flew up to her window and told her that her grandmother was dying. So I'm like, she was on hold on. Jesus. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You tell me that a man flew. She said, yes, yeah, flew. And this girl lived on the fourth floor of an apartment complex. Ooh, I said, Iron you? Man is a mile. Bro. <laughs> I, mean, I reached down, man. I grabbed my beaver, cut that motherfucker on and all. Beep, beep, beep. And she stalked me, man, for like a whole year. Listen, man. A whole, and wound up becoming a police officer, too. Listen, I had it. And you know, those are crazy ones, man. I, mean, so I believe she was emotionally damaged yeah. or traumatized or, or something like that mm-hmm. I, but look uh, who knows i don't know i'm not a psychiatrist and me either but i mean I, I again i feel like it's some validity to it like in our community a lot of us especially the younger you know i mean the older generation or us older mm-hmm. millennials like we wasn't taught anything about mental health we wasn't taught anything about like anything about controlling our emotions or whatever yeah so yeah nobody was teaching us like you know as a as a man you ain't supposed to cry or as women, you know, they wasn't teaching them that, you know, boys in their late teens and up until they 30s and some 40s and 50s, they're not emotionally mature enough to be in a relationship. They're going to cheat. and this, Nobody was telling none of us that. So, you know, we were just out there freestyling and it was just getting crazy. Yeah, it was getting- <laughs> it's just like getting crazy out there. Again, I had a girl. You know what a Nuva ring is, right? Yeah. So um, having a little... <laughs> fun uh, one of those kind of uh, so you pulled the ring out bro. discharge <laughs> one of the nastiest tasting things ever <laughs> damn <laughs> and one day i'm at my mom's house i see this black pontiac pull up i'm like this girl is in there wilding i mean she is in my mom's house because i got a knife out the kitchen i'm like this girl is about to <laughs> yeah. my neighbor calling my sister like so yeah i had some crazy stuff like <laughs> doing just doing the most <laughs> It happens. Yeah, man. I mean, well, yes, I was. I was peeping out the window under the bed, bro. I got out of that joint so quick, yeah. bro. And I, I cursed my man out for hooking me up with that crazy ass <laughs> bro, too. I said, man, what's wrong with you hooking me up with that bro? He said, oh, man, that's my girl girlfriend, man. Now, nah, man, I thought he was good for you. Nah, nah man, that bro crazy as all hell. Me $150. Yeah. For going on over there, man. That girl stalking me, man. Hey, listen, and no lie, this was the same. She she tried to put a. Um, a voodoo, what the, oh. uh, is it? Voodoo hex, something like the little, oh my God, the little doll. Yo, bro, she left like a little doll on my on, on, tell, on my front porch. Look at Tay talking about the voodoo be encouraging little <laughs> T. I know you ain't talking crazy, T, because we all know how you roll. Listen, man. <laughs> this your podcast, man. Make sure you leave a comment. Comment. <laughs> tell us what you think. Make sure y'all like this joint. Yeah, you know I mean, is Doctor Umar talking facts or is he talking cat? Yeah, you know I mean, again, I mean, this joint podcast.